Good morning, and welcome to worship this third Sunday of Lent. For those of you visiting with us today, I'm Frank Harpster. I'm the senior pastor here at St. Peter's Lutheran Church in Ocean City, Maryland, and we welcome you and thank you for worshiping with us. It is good that we can worship safely from our own location until that time when we can gather again in one location to worship. Let us now quiet our hearts and our minds and turn our attention to the Lord that we come to worship this day. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the Spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world that you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace, and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our worship continues as we hear God's holy word for this day.
The first reading for today is from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. On this third Sunday in Lent, we share Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands and their message to the ends of the world where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. And nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to the, to the be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer.
The second reading is from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast and abounding in steadfast love. Hear now the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter, verses 13 through 22. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling doves, Take these out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for forty-six years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, the disciples remembered what he had said, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken, the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, you sent your Son, Jesus the Christ, to reveal your love and to redeem us from sin and death. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, open our hearts and our minds to the significance of Christ's journey to the cross, and deepen our faith in the saving grace of the wondrous cross and the empty tomb. This we ask in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Our gospel reading from John this morning finds Jesus and his disciples going to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. Now keep in mind, Passover is one of three festivals that all Jewish males 20 years and older were to attend every year. Each was to present an appropriate animal sacrifice and to pay their temple tax. Now keep in mind, people traveled long distances over rough terrain for days to get to the temple for Passover. Thus, a booming business developed that allowed people to buy the appropriate animal for sacrifice once they got to the temple, instead of having to bring it with them. It also allowed folks from other countries to exchange their foreign currency to pay the temple tax. It sounds like a win-win operation, right? After all, they are eliminating challenges that could possibly prevent someone from being able to share in Passover. 
On the surface, it sounds like a great ministry, eliminating obstacles that would prevent people from going to worship. But the problem is, Satan worked his way into this potentially loving service in the form of greed. The merchants started cheating folks in these purchases and exchange processes. Matthew 21, 13 says, It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. And it wasn't just the merchants that was overcome with greed. Even the priests, those who were supposed to be leading people to God's love and grace, were in on the action of cheating people, of being greedy. They regularly disqualified the animals the people brought with them for sacrifice, using some technicality to force them to buy one of the priests, quote, approved animals, of course, at inflated prices. Now imagine traveling for days, a very challenging journey, bringing along your animal that you've cared for along the entire way, ready to offer it for sacrifice, and then learning once you got there, it's not accepted, and you're required to purchase one of their animals at a much higher cost. So what was designed to make it easier and more accessible for folks to be able to come to temple and worship God turned into something that made it even more prohibitive for folks to be able to worship. Let's look at a very similar story that most of us can relate to. Most of us know that it can be a challenge to get to St. Peter's on Sunday mornings in the summer, especially on event weekends. There are times that traffic can add an extra hour to your commute. That was one of the reasons that we started offering a fourth service at the Ocean Pines Community Center in the summers. So that folks on the other side of the bridge, those in the Ocean Pines area, could get to worship easier in the summer, thus making it more accessible for many people. What if you were to walk into the Ocean Pines Community Center for worship this summer, and Pastor Harry greets you at the door with his big smile and welcomes you in, and then tells you, if you want to worship here today, in addition to your regular offering, it's going to cost you an additional $100. So you pony up the $100. If you're like me, you'd be grumbling under your breath, if not out loud. You go in and find your seat, and you notice that it says in the bulletin that the hymns for this morning will be chosen by the congregation. So you think to yourself, I had to pay an extra hundred dollars to worship here today. At least I will get to sing my favorite hymn. So you walk over to the piano, and you make your request to sing your favorite hymn. And Karen says, sure, we can sing that for the opening hymn today. It will be a great way to start the service, but it will cost you $50. Please make your check payable to Karen Butterwick's cruise fund. Now, of course, we know this would never happen at St. Peter's. That's not what we are about. Our mission is saved by grace to feed the physically and spiritually hungry in the world, not that we will do what we will, can do to fill our own pockets. But Jesus walked into a much similar situation. In the confines of the temple courts, people whose mission was to feed the spiritually hungry, initially doing what they could to make worship in the temple more accessible and easier for folks, were now about the task of filling their own pockets. In the very place where one was expected to hear sounds of worship, of priests chanting psalms, of people lifting up their prayers heavenward, there was the overwhelming noise of clinking coins, people bartering and arguing, the stench of animals, and the stench of greed. Jesus comes on to the scene. Jesus, who had been spending every waking moment preaching and teaching love and healing and life, grabs a rope fashions it into a whip, and starts lashing out on merchants and animals alike. When he gets to the money changers, he flips their table, sending those neatly stacked and accounted for coins in every direction. And then Jesus gets to those selling doves, says, get these out of here. 
Stop making my father's house a marketplace. Think about it for a minute. Jesus, with a whip in his hand, is not the usual image that comes to mind when we think about our Savior, is it? Can you imagine what had to be going through the minds of the disciples that were there with Jesus, watching what he was doing? How would you feel? Would you be embarrassed? I wonder if they felt much like you and I might feel if someone in our group starts to complain loudly at the restaurant that we're at, causing a scene over their food or their bad service. As the disciples wondered what the heck was going on with Jesus, at least one of them remembered the prophecy from Psalm 69. It said, zeal for your house will consume me. That's what was going on with Jesus. Zeal, intense love for God's house, for God's purpose, for God's people. God's house was to be a place of prayer, a place where God came to the sinner and gave freely of his love and forgiveness. The merchants and the priests, however, were taking advantage of sinners who had come looking for solace and grace. God's house was no longer a refuge and had been turned into a den of robbers. And Jesus was not going to allow that to happen one minute longer. So the question I ask you this morning, do we have the same zeal for the house of the Lord? Now that's an interesting question presented to us this morning. I wonder if the question would have the same meaning or if our response would be any different a year ago or two years ago. When we were able to come to St. Peter's week after week for three services on Sunday, four in the summer, for an additional community meal and worship service every Wednesday evenings through Lent. But that hasn't been the case for the past year. We have not been able to gather in God's house at St. Peter's Lutheran Church on Coastal Highway in Ocean City, Maryland. We have done what we could to enable us to be church together safely, worshiping safely from our own location, recording much of the service at St. Peter's, and the rest from people's homes. We have given you bulletins so you could actively read and pray and sing along so that you could actively worship through the video and not just watch a worship video service so that you could be an active participant and not simply a spectator. I have shared Holy Communion with many of you outside your homes this summer. Pastor Betty and I shared ashes and Holy Communion through drive through on Ash Wednesday. Pastor Harry, Deacon Sherry, and I have shared God's word and prayer with you every day at noon, and we'll continue to do that. We've prayed with many of you over the phone or in your yard. Our open door feeding ministry continues to feed our sisters and brothers in Christ who don't have enough to eat, who can't feed their family. We have continued to host and support the cold weather shelter, preventing our homeless sisters and brothers from freezing to death on those cold nights. We have continued to reach out to one another, to stay connected through telephone calls, social media, correspondence. Your leaders and council has done everything we can to keep us all safe and connected and cared for monitoring the pandemic, and to use a phrase that our bishop has quoted, constantly planning the work and working the plan to enable to us to be church together safely. So for the past year, the church has continued to be open and active and faithful in our mission, but we have not been able to do so together in our house of worship in the minds of all those that were in the temple that day. The gospel reading was focusing on the house of worship, the building, and what that space was to be used for. Our house of worship will be reopening, and many of us will be gathering on Easter morning at 10 a.m. here in the CLC to worship together for the first time in over a year. Others will be able to share worship through live stream. 
which is quite different than watching and sharing in a pre-recorded worship service. And again, I ask the question, how is your zeal for the Lord's house? It is my hope and my prayer that we will all have the same zeal as Jesus Christ, making sure that first and foremost, our house of prayer is a house of love, and that we will be able to keep that as the focus, even above our own needs. That our need to be back in St. Peter's for worship does not overshadow our need to keep everyone safe and healthy and protected. This house of worship should always be a safe place where people know they are surrounded by love. It should never be a place of fear or detriment. It is my hope and prayer that we will gather and do all that we can to make sure that one another's temple, our bodies, will be safe in this gathering. The reality is, we hunger to be together again, to be together here, to worship, to share God's word and sacrament, together in community, surrounded by one another in love. I can't think of a more fitting and more powerful day to do this than the day we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord the ultimate act of love and new life. But we must do so safely, following all the guidelines and safe practices that our leaders and council have worked on and put together for our safety and well-being. The reality is, this Easter service and the services to follow are not going to be like they were once, years ago. And we don't know when or even if things will get back to the way they were. But what we do know, that is as we lift up the cross, as we lift that cross high, God's love and grace is indeed proclaimed. And that the Holy Spirit is and will be at work in, through, around, and sometimes even despite us. May we continue to glory in the cross of Christ, and may our zeal for God's house, both building and body, exemplify the life-giving love of Jesus Christ, that we may continue to be that very hope and love for others. Amen.
in ancient and modern times. Lent has been a time for instruction for candidates preparing for their baptism at the Easter Vigil. At the same time, the whole church anticipates Easter through acts of repentance and spiritual renewal. It is therefore appropriate that we renew the basics of our faith during these Sundays in Lent, so that we all might be renewed by our baptismal covenants and made ready to celebrate Easter. The Ten Commandments begin by saying, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods. What does this mean for us? We are to fear, love, and trust God above everything else. The second commandment says, You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. What does this mean for us? We are to fear and love God so that we do not use his name superstitiously or use it to curse, swear, lie, or deceive, but call on God in prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. The third commandment says, Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. What does this mean for us? We are to fear and love God, so that we do not neglect his word and the preaching of it, but regard it as holy and gladly hear it and learn it. The fourth commandment says, Honor your father and mother. What does this mean for us? We are to fear and love God so that we do not despise or anger our parents or others in authority, but respect, obey, love, and serve them. The fifth commandment says, You shall not kill. What does this mean? We are to fear and love God so that we do not hurt our neighbor in any way, but help them in all their physical needs. The sixth commandment, you shall not commit adultery. What does this mean for us? We are to fear and love God so that in matters of sex, our words and conduct are pure and honorable and spouses are to love and respect each other. The seventh commandment says, you shall not steal. What does this mean for us? We are to fear and love God so that we do not take our neighbor's money or property or get them in any dishonest way, but help them to improve and protect their property and means of making a living. The eighth commandment says, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. What does this mean for us? We are to fear and love God so that we do not betray, slander, or lie about our neighbor. We are to defend them, speak well of them, and explain their actions in the kindest way. The ninth and tenth commandment says, you shall not covet. What does this mean for us? We are to fear and love God so that we do not desire to get our neighbor's possessions, spouse, or workers by scheming or pretending to have a right to them, but to always help our neighbor to keep what is theirs. On this third Sunday in Lent, let us pray Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. There is no God before you. Purify the faith of your church, that your people place their trust in nothing beside you. Your name is holy. Guide your church that in every situation, your people's words and actions honor your name. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. The heavens declare your glory, renew your creation, provide leaders in the struggle for clean air and water, protect creatures and crops that rely on healthy ecosystems, give all people the willingness to repent when our way of life pollutes the earth and skies. 
Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Your foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. Fill leaders with the foolishness of your peace and mercy. Your law defends the vulnerable. Work through legislators, judicial systems, and systems of law enforcement to protect the well-being and freedom of all. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Your weakness is stronger than human strength. Protect those who are vulnerable and give courage to all who are suffering. We especially pray for the members, relatives, and friends of our congregation. Today we lift up Missionary Jordan, the family and friends of Bill Niemiller, the family and friends of Derek Stiegler, David, Nancy Staten, Dana Bean, Kathy Vornlocker, the family and friends of Joe Smith, Norman Holty, Krista and Jason Mumford and family, Melody Hill, Dorothy Meese, Fred Kaufman and family, Debbie Fling, Dr. Carl Krim and family, Mary Peek, Michelle and Bob Lapeer, Pastor Bob Stevens and Bonnie Stevens, Lee Kramer. We lift up all caregivers, first responders, and all those working on the front lines to save lives. Jessica Harpster, Vicki Mills, Ron Hagar, Joanne and Frank Gum, Janine Height and family, Savannah Bona and family, Jim Stark, Todd Hafner, Ron and Pat Hartman, Gull Creek staff and residents, Janine and Ryan and family, Ruth Beeson, Carolyn Nuovo, Larry Haygood Jr., Samara Loss, Nancy Jacoby, Carrie Jacoby, Sonia, Rose, Max, Veronica Bona and family, Brenda Robbins and family, Barb and Ron Albright, Patty McDermott, Rick Latshaw, Ada Mae Shipley, Pastor Sander Nyler, Frank Harpster, Fran Dolan and family, Carol Robinson, Bernie Hartline, Kim Council, Steve Ellis, Janet Ellis, Peter Avitable. We lift up all those in assisted living, especially Jen Anderson, Lisa C., Claire Dykeman, Mim Fritz, Bonnie and Will Yuski, Violet Green. We lift up all those serving in the military as well as their families. Today we especially lift up Gunnar Bogan, Justin Carter, Cal Kramer, Katie Kramer, Stephanie DeLuccio, Nicholas Nelbone, David Owens, Joshua Robinson, Nicholas Sorrentino, Jacob Sturgill, Ryan Swingler, Kyle Wood. We lift up all missionaries, especially Erin Ryan, as she prepares to come back to the United States at the end of the month. We lift up our bishops, Elizabeth Eaton and Bill Goal. We lift up our partners in ministry. Today we lift up Tree of Life Lutheran Church in Odessa, Delaware, and Pastor Greg Johnson. We lift up our G4 partners, Community Lutheran Church, Faith Lutheran Church, Grace of God Lutheran Church, and Pastor Betty Walensky. We lift up those that you now name out loud or in the quiet of your heart. Defend victims of crime and bring redemption to those who have harmed others. Give Sabbath rest to all who labor. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You call us to proclaim Christ suffered and crucified. Give clarity to this congregation and our leaders so that we might follow Christ beyond our own habits and comfort. Bless our bishops, Elizabeth and Bill, together with all pastors and deacons, and all who serve within the body of Christ. Clear out anything in our common life that would obscure the gospel or that serves our own interests. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
The cross of Christ is your power for all who are being saved. Thank you for Pe Pechua, Felicity, and all the martyrs whose witness reveals the power of the cross. We also remember and give thanks for those members of our congregation who have run their course of life in this earth in faith and have departed in peace. Give us the same trust in life and in death. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for health and healing in our world as we struggle to overcome the current pandemic. Bless the scientists, doctors, and all caregivers and grant a resolution to this health crisis. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves in all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Our worship continues with the offering. While the church building is still closed for a few more weeks, the church is still very much open and active and alive. We continue to do what we can to feed the physically and spiritually hungry in the world. And this is only possible with your continued support and partnership. We ask that you continue to reach out to your neighbors, to your family, to your friends, to your coworkers, to reach out through pen and paper, through phone call, text message, social media, to reach out safely, to stay connected, to remind them that they are loved. We also ask for your financial support here at St. Peter's. You may do so by sending a check into the church, or you can go to our donate button on our Facebook page or our website, and there are various apps out there. Our ministry of the month for March is the Pastor's Discretionary Fund. This fund is set up so that I'm able to provide some financial support for members of the congregation and members of the community and sometimes transients who find themselves in special need of a little bit of financial help. I've been very blessed to be able to help folks over the years and that's only possible through your continued support. So I ask you to prayerfully in March to send a donation into the church marked Pastor's Discretionary Fund. We thank you for all the ways in which you partner with us for all the ways in which you helped us support and lead the ministries here at St. Peter's. We thank God for the ways he blesses our efforts for his good. Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us on this journey that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Would you pray with me in the words our Savior taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, you are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Secret. 
to share with you before we conclude our worship service for today. A couple updates on Holy Week. On Palm Sunday, we will have a pre-recorded service available at 9 a.m. We will also be offering drive through palms, prayers, and communion from 9 to 11 a.m. here at St. Peter's. Uh, you'll need to enter into the back parking lot uh, off of Old Landing Road and follow the signs. You will need to stay in your car the entire time and we'll be following all the safe practices and precautions. You'll need to have your mask on while your window is open. Also, Wednesdays through Lent at 7 p.m., Pastor Betty and myself are leading Lenten midweek devotions. Information for that is in your bulletin as well as on our website. Again, that's 7 o'clock on Wednesdays through Lent. We hope you'll join us. Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, Pastor Betty and I are putting together services that'll be G4 sponsored. And those will be online services and information will be coming for those. On Easter, we'll be opening our doors for the first worship service in person in over a year. We'll be doing that in the CLC, following all of the safe practices and guidelines that were set up for us from our council. Uh, we are able to hold 72 people plus the worship leaders. So you will need to call the church office Monday through Thursday, 8 to 4, or Fridays, 8 to 1, and make your reservation. Again, for Easter, the service will be available by reservation only. And we will be live streaming this and all of our services um, for those who are not able to join us in person. So Easter Sunday, it'll be 10 a.m. here in the CLC at St. Peter's, as well as live streamed. And all services following that will be at 10 a.m. in person and live streamed. In the meantime, please join us at 9 a.m., on Sundays for our online worship service. And those premiere at nine, but you can certainly watch them anytime you like after that. Join us on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. for our online Bible study. Join us on Friday afternoons at four o'clock for our happy hour or connection hour. Our open door feeding ministry continues to hand out bags of food and warm drinks on Wednesdays from 12 to 1.30. And we continue to house the cold weather shelter on these nights that it's too cold for our homeless brothers and sisters to be outside and I ask you to continue to hold those ministries and those folks in your prayers please do all that you can 
to stay home when you can, to stay safe always, to stay healthy, and to follow all the guidelines. That does save lives. If there's anything I can do for you, please don't hesitate to ask. I'll be happy to take you to a medical appointment or to get your vaccinations. I'll be glad to pick up food for you or medications. If you need me to drop off a mask or devotional, please let me know. I'll be happy to do that for you. Please know that I love you. Your church family loves you. And most of all, God loves you. Let us continue our Lenten journey and go forth to love and serve our Lord and neighbor. Thanks be to God. Thank you.